So we're going to make this a little more interesting by adding a little ball that we can roll around. So we're going to leave the acceleration label because that stuff's kind of useful for debugging. But I'm going to remove the testing label. So I'm going to grab that label and just drag it off to the trash. I'm then going to take this label and bring it all the way up to the corner. I'm going to set it to 5.5 five, because that's nice and that looks good. And I'm going to move this guy up. And he's going to be Y5.55. So that's our thing. We'll still leave all the stuff for controls. We do have to remove the buttons label stuff. So I'm going to take and remove each of those and just drag them off to get rid of them. And most of them are using the A and B button, but let's take and add a ball. So I'm going to take and we're going to grab a, you're going to use the circle tool. I'm going to drag a circle onto our area. I'm going to rename him ball. And we can set a border color. I'm going to make it a white border. I'm going to make it, I don't know, let's set the, let's make our ball blue and we'll set the in the outside of one color and also the background color to be maybe a darker blue it's a good looking little ball and i'm going to set his coordinates to be the middle of the screen so i always forget what the middle of the screen is here so i'm going to bring this to the edge so it's 135 pixels wide by 240 tall. So that makes the center screen roughly uh, 135 slash 2, so 67 by 120. So that's the center of the screen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move this ball around by looking at the accelerations. So we have our main loop. We're going to make a, that checking and setting the display. We'll add a chunk after all those tests to actually move the ball. So we're going to start off by just moving it by default. So we're going to just take and go to our circle and add a change All right, there's not a change position, so we're going to have to use the set X and Y. So before we start, we're going to take two new variables. We're going to make a variable called ball X and a variable called ball Y. And we're going to go where we set our mode. We're going to set ball X to be 67. And we're going to set our ball Y to 120. And then we're going to constantly set the ball circle's position, set ball X and ball Y. Yeah, I'm going to clean up my blocks. And before I do anything else, I'm going to sort of scroll up and grab this main block and put it way up high because we're going to be adding stuff here. We're going to set the ball X and Y to variable ball X and variable ball Y. And now we're going to change these by looking at the acceleration. So we're going to go variables, change ball X by IMU, get Y acceleration. Duplicate this block, change ball X by IMU X acceleration. So if I start and run this code, I'm hoping it'll behave itself better because I've updated the firmware. And I'm going to get an error message, cannot convert float to int. So I haven't really talked about the types of numbers on a computer, but it turns out there are really... Um, Two types of numbers. There are decimal numbers and whole numbers. 
And the bulbs didn't always be a whole number. So we can't change, we have to make sure they always change to a whole number. So there's a couple ways to do this. One way is that we could always be rounding the value. That's probably the easiest, so I'm gonna math, grab the round block and put it in front of ball X and then go to math, grab another round block and put it in front of the ball Y. That way ball X and ball Y are always gonna be sh keeping track of where we are and we'll just round its position so it's always gonna be placed at a whole number position. Now it's moving, but it's very, very slow. So we can make this a little more powerful by changing the X, multiplying this by a number. So let's make it 10 times faster. So I'm gonna go to math, grab a arithmetic block, grab the multiply, and go steal a number block, because I'm lazy. Then, and we're gonna grab this. Before I do that, actually, we're gonna duplicate this block. Then drop the ball x in here. Drop it there. Grab the y. Put the y in there. Put this in. So the ball should move a little bit faster now. Hope it loads. So X works really well, but the Y is moving backwards. The easy way to fix this is I can take the ball Y and change that to negative 10. So now the ball will always roll down based on gravity. And I'm gonna refresh. Server switches to connected. Typically, that means we're up and running. Again, if it keeps failing, you can reboot the device. I'm going to pause while we do that. So I've apparently needed to negative the opposite one because now my ball always floats, which might be desired, but I kind of want to treat it like a marble so I can move it back and forth. I'm going to reload. And now we have a ball that moves the thing. So the next step from here would probably be adding it so it doesn't roll off the edge of the screen by checking to see if it's hit the edge of the screen. But overall, it looks like it's good. It's running a little slow, mostly because I think we have that 200 millisecond wait. So I'm going to take this guy out on each of these, and let's see if it runs a little smoother. Next video, we'll take look at putting bounds around the edges so that the ball can't hit go past the edge of the screen.